What is a TLSO brace? TLSO stands for thoracolumbar sacral orthosis. The TSO brace is the most common type of brace used for scoliosis, especially here in the United States. Thoracic re refers to the thoracic or the middle to upper part of the spine. Lumbar refers to the lumbar spine or the lower back. And sacral refers to the tailbone or the sacrum that sits in your between your hips and your lower and your lower back or your hip area. So a TSO brace works by trying to stop scoliosis that progresses during adolescent stages. And a scoliosis is the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature that also rotates. And this, this condition or scoliosis, unfortunately, is a progressive condition, especially during rapid growth phases. However, the key thing you want to understand is that the scoliosis is a three-dimensional problem. It, uh, there's a bend and a twist occurring, and this is true in every case of scoliosis. There must be both things. So the theory of these TLSO braces is that they'll apply pressure along the spine at specific locations to try to stop the scoliosis from progressing. A classic TLSO brace uses a three-point pressure system that squeezes the spine into a straighter alignment. Now, TSSO braces are typically recommended only for children and adolescents that are still growing. And the main goal of these braces is just trying to slow progression. So they're only prescribed for cases that are normally between 25 degrees and 40 to 45 degrees in this moderate category. If the curve is less than 25 degrees, they normally would not recommend this type of scoliosis brace. And if the curve is over 40 to 45 degrees, they won't recommend it because at that point they can consider it to be surgical and they, they see no benefit in trying to slow down a surgical case because at that point they would just recommend surgery. Once a child is no longer growing or they consider them fully grown, they normally don't recommend these braces because the braces are not used to reduce the scoliosis, they're just trying to slow progression. So again, it's adolescent curve, it's adolescent patients between 25 and 40 degrees, very limited use that they typically recommend this type of brace. The most common type of a TSO brace is something that we call the Boston brace. It's by far the number one brace used in the United States, and Boston braces can be can be prescribed anywhere from full-time wear to to 12 hours to nighttime wear. And normally the, the amount of time they would wear, amount of months they would wear the brace would depend on how, how long the child is still growing for. But typically around anywhere from about 18 months up to roughly you know four to five years, depending on when that was prescribed and when the scoliosis is actually caught and diagnosed and prescribed. Unfortunately, the Boston brace is by far the number one brace used in the United States, and the Boston brace has many limitations associated with the brace design. These bra the Boston brace was originally designed to make bracing more efficient, not necessarily more effective, easier to apply, easier to for the orthodontist to put on. The tra these traditional types of bracing, or I like to call Boston braces, are very limited in their and how effective they are because they're only trying to slow progression. They're not really trying to reduce the curve. It's a two-dimensional push, meaning they're only using a three-point pressure system. And we know that scoliosis also ha has a rotational component, which makes it a three-dimensional problem. So it's, it's not addressing the full scoliosis uh, complexity it's associated in the presentation. Also, Boston braces are not completely customized. They look very standardized, meaning you look at one person's brace, you look at another person's brace, they look almost exactly the same. In fact, I have many patients that come to my office with Boston braces that have been fit, and they could, you know, if they're, the kids are roughly the same size, they can share each other's brace because there's not much difference in the design. They're not very, very customized. Now, they are customized in width and in length, but the interior of the brace is very, roughly very, very symmetrical and they're and they're very uncomfortable to wear because they extend very low past the patient's hips so it makes it very difficult for for kids to actually sit in the braces properly and to wear them in school because they're so low and they, they have a hard time sitting with it. Also, Boston braces tend to become less and less comfortable to wear over time. And this is normally a sign that the curve is worsening. As curves get bigger because they're trying to just squeeze and slow them down, what ends up happening is the brace starts getting more and more pressure in this squeezing type of environment. So therefore the brace becomes less comfortable to wear over time. If this is happening and you have a Boston brace, this is what leads to compliance issues and the patient not saying, I don't wanna wear it because it doesn't feel, it starts feeling worse. 
Also, by squeezing and immobilizing the spine in this way, it can actually cause weakness to the body over time. So therefore, that's a concern about the squeezing effect that can happen. And because it's causing such a squeeze, it can lead to some breathing issues and some skin problems because the constant squeeze that's occurring. Now, there are other types of braces that exist out there that are more effective. And what's happening now, there's a big movement towards more modern type style of braces, and these are corrective braces. And corrective braces addresses many of the shortcomings that a traditional TOSSO brace, like a Boston brace, doesn't doesn't address. And the biggest thing is that these corrective braces are doing the very that very word. They're trying to correct the scoliosis. So since they're trying to correct and reduce the scoliosis, they can be applied in the much wider range of patients. We can apply corrective braces on mild patients, on moderate patients, and even severe cases. And we can use them beyond just the adolescent stage. We can use them in adults and even later stage life because the goal is to try to make the spine straighter. Just like a patient can use braces on their teeth and they really any age because the goal is to reduce the, the misalignment of the teeth. Since the goal is not just to try to slow down progression during growth, we can use these braces in other, in other times. And the Scully brace is a system that I like to use that represents the culmination of everything that we've learned about how to make a brace more effective in reducing a scoliosis. Now, scoliosis def a scoli brace definitely addresses the three-dimensional component of a scoliosis, and it uses really state-of-the-art technology in, in designing and developing the brace. But the key thing about, about a scoli brace or about any corrective brace is that it needs to be fit and designed properly to push the spine instead of squeezing the spine into a better position. And this corrective position needs to be biomechanically sound in a way that's going to provide a corrective nature and no more squeezing. Our goal is not to squeeze. Our goal is to correct the spine into a straighter position to not only make the spine look better, but also improve the shape of the body. We should see both those things occur with the proper use of corrective bracing, reduced scoliosis, and better shaped of the torso. What ends up happening with traditional TSL braces is the curves tend to worsen, the torso tends to worsen with them, and as they pull these braces off, there's no there's nothing that, that actually changes, and we're seeing this, this kind of false sense of security because when they take an x-ray in the brace, it actually looks better because it's causing the squeezing. With, with these corrective braces, we're seeing the curve get better in the brace, but when we take the brace off, we're seeing the curve be better and we're seeing the shape of the torso be better. If we're changing the shape of the torso and reducing the x-ray, these results are very long lasting because we're actually making a structural change to the person's body. Now, just like there's very big, diff very big differences in, in scoliosis treatment approaches, meaning approaches that look more at surgical interventions versus more tradition, more conservative non-surgical intervention. We know there's very, very big differences between this type of approach. We know there's very big differences in bracing. And what unfortunately tends to get equated, equated is that if somebody has a brace, meaning it's made of plastic and there's Velcro straps and foam, a lot of patients think all braces are the same, but that's not the case. The design of the brace is ultimately what leads to the best results. And if a person has a bad design brace, it can actually negate other things that we're doing that could possibly be well, that would work well to help reduce the scoliosis. And I know personally, I tried using Boston braces, traditional TSSOs, for, for almost a, a year and had very, very in, unsuccessful results. And in fact, all those cases worsened and they got, and they progressed and they end up like, I got better results not using bracing at all. So therefore, Having a wrong styled brace or a wrong fitting brace or a brace that's not designed properly to produce a corrective result can have a significant impact on the results that you're going to have trying to stop your curve from progressing and reducing your curve into a better number or a better state requires a very, a very specifically designed brace. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.